And then we can just forget about it and just sit there on the table and it's uh-huh. just away. Um, to start with, you, when you joined Charlton, it was uh, you were their, their, their top buy. Uh, yes, I, I joined Charlton uh, 36 mm-hmm. from Torquay. Yeah. And um, I was an attacking centre half. This is something that I'll never understand about Jimmy C. He watched me play uh, against Charlton mm-hmm. uh, over the Easter period, Charlton and Torquay. Must have known that I was an attacking centre half, which was the last of the breed mm-hmm. before Arsenal brought in this defensive system. And. Uh, wanted to be very defensive and <laughs> 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 uh, this is why I say about Jimmy it was the first three or four months, come back Don, come back Don, come back. <laughs> you weren't supposed to go in the attacking position. Well, I wanted to be in the game. Yes. I was following the play and getting back in defence. Mm-hmm. But uh, whilst I was up in attack, with two full backs wide, the centre looked a bit, uh, a bit, a bit vulnerable. <laughs> so Jimmy was spending all his breath there shouting me to come back. Mm-hmm. So anyway, it lasted for a couple of uh, two or three matches, I think, and uh, obviously it dawned on Jimmy Z that I wasn't going to be a defensive centre half. And he moved me to left half mm-hmm. and uh, brought in Frank Rist or but Turner uh, the centre half. Mm-hmm. And uh, from then on, of course, I was allowed full play of my attacking as well as my defensive yeah. ability. So when you joined, uh, Charlton would have been in the second division? Quite long. Uh, uh, Charlton already gone up from the third uh, division? Well, we won, uh, my first season, I played about 16 or 17 games in the third division of South, and mm-hmm. we won it easily with a sort of uh, massive lead from yeah. the second team. And. Um, and then we went into the second division the following season and we were runners up to Manchester United in that. Mm-hmm. And the following year we were runners up to Manchester City, my hometown. <laughs> it robbed me of uh, three championship medals, which would have been a record yeah. that nobody could have beaten. Mm. But in itself it was a record that... I, I did a, it is a record, but uh, it can be beaten by somebody winning the third division, the second division and... Mm. First of all, now, what, what are Jimmy Seed? Because obviously the supporters hold him in very high esteem. What was Jimmy Seed's? The supporters hold him up on a pedestal because he gave the club such. Oh no! I, I think as a bloke, he uh, it, it was horrible. Mm. Uh, I think that um, uh, he knew his football, but it was defensive football. Mm. It wasn't. Uh, there wasn't any flair in it. Mm. His theory was that uh, if you stop the other people scoring a goal, there may be an accident at the other end and we'll win, mm-hmm. but we'll get the draw. Yeah. And that yeah. was his, his maximum, to sort of get the defence back quickly mm-hmm. uh, uh, as soon as our attack broke down and, um, and prevent the other side from scoring. Uh, as a bloke, he did Jimmy Trotter. Yeah. They, they were the sort of silent, dark, dour type you know, that you're supposed to read what they're thinking. Mm. And um, they did me down over money, over my sort of um, the crude like share of benefits, which was absolutely diabolical after the bloody service I gave them. Mm. And um, uh, I, I'm positive. <laughs> but this just shows the type of person that Jimmy Seed is, or was, is that um, after I left the club, you see, what happened, Brighton, I, I guested for them during the war, made friends with a bloke called Carlo Campbell, who, a lovely old boy, he was the chairman of um, a big food distributing company, I forget the name, in London, and he wined and dined Jimmy Seed somewhere in London and got him to agree that he could approach me. Yeah. And sort of, of course, a couple of days afterwards, he approached me, and I went down there and met him and his board of directors, four of them, mm-hmm. and, um, oh, yes, Don, you're just our bloke. So I went back to Jimmy, oh, he said, I didn't expect it to be so quick. I can remember him. I didn't expect it to be so quick. 
you know, they'd been wine and dine and didn't want me to go. So this would have been... Uh, he was talked into it. This would have been for late 47. Right? For, what year was that? Uh, that would be 1947. 47. Yeah. 47. So the same year as winning the cup? That is the year, yes, I yeah. was. Uh, and uh, so he couldn't do anything about it because he'd given Carlo Campbell permission to approach me. And uh, so away I went, but without his blessing. And, and that's uh, an amazing thing. Uh, I have a silver salver, mm -hmm. I'll show it you, that's upstairs, from the trainers and players of Charlton Athletic wishing me good luck. Mm. He wouldn't contribute to it, wouldn't he? Isn't that fantastic? I didn't notice it for years after, yeah. but nobody mentioned it. But what would put me onto it, whilst I was manager of Brighton, I went up there for a reserve game, mm -hmm to watch the other side uh, reserve, I was interested in somebody. And after the match went into the boardroom and Jimmy Seed was on his brandy and port, mm -hmm. that was his favourite tipple. And uh, I was in no hurry because my train wasn't due until, so I stayed on until everybody had left. Yeah. And when we were alone, they sat at the board and said, I bloody hate you. <laughs> I said, what? I hate you. And I said, oh, what have I done to you? Mm. You didn't call me on the photographs at the cup final. I couldn't believe my pity. He held this against you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is him, an mm. introvert. He, he, he was slinking. I can remember yeah. him slinking at the side of the doing, wanting to come and... and, and, and prevented by his character from mm. sort of, I mean, when we see managers are there, they have the shake right. never shoot me by the hand, and they congratulate me, wanted me to go, come in, ship. Well, you don't think of something like that in the heat no. of winning a cup and press people and people carrying you on your shoulders, do you? Mm. I don't think. <laughs> and so that's what, so he did me out of most of me a clue share of benefit, and... Uh, because I've, I've heard similar, not, not not as extreme as that, but I've heard tales along the same lines from other players that Jimmy Seed was as tight as anything, and to get, oh, yes, to get anything well. out of him was very He it may have been influenced with the directors, I don't know, uh, uh, but uh, if so, he should have said so. Mm. He would have gained our sympathy instead of our bloody hate. Yeah. Because we did hate the bugger, there's no doubt about it. He stopped our golf for, for, uh, for a couple of seasons. On a Monday, we were allowed to play golf. Mm. Uh, uh, Beckenham, a public course, which cost them shillings. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped that. If you want to go and play golf, you've got to pay for it yourself. So, uh, uh, as an individual, he could play the piano. That's about all I could recommend it for you, a good <laughs> pianist. And as an individual, uh, there was nothing like him about him. Mm. Whether it was because of his own character, his introvert yeah. nature, uh, his ability to have any small talk at all, mm. uh, I, I'm not sure what it was, but uh, he didn't come over well as a, uh, as a bloke. Mm. And did he, he didn't have much rapport with the actual players, mm. he just he kept, he kept his distance. He kept his distance, he, he was never one of us, never. Who, who made the team, did he make the team selections? Oh, oh yes, uh, he was in full control of team mm. selections. But uh, I, I was the sort of bloke that, that I, I was there to play football, and any side issues I wasn't, uh, I wasn't interested in. Uh, mm. I, I played my football, I trained, and I went home to my wife, uh, and uh, all this sort of... Uh, side issue mm. of uh, players being dropped and because uh, I was never dropped you see, so I didn't come if I'd have been dropped I may have been more interested <laughs> uh, but he, he switched and swapped the, the, the players around and I and I just thought whilst uh, I've been waiting for you Les Bolter must have hated the side of me because I did <laughs> him out of his inside left position and yeah. he was transferred to somewhere else but at the time, it never, <laughs> yeah, never playing, crossed in playing. mind that uh, uh, I, I may be sort of upsetting people uh, because uh, uh, I, I was um, 
uh, an adaptable player who can play anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm sure most of it. But it never showed uh, in our golfing and our playing. Uh, uh, it never, um, it never manifested itself. Mm. Um, what was the sort of the atmosphere amongst the players or in the, within the club during that? The well, I, I think the atmosphere was good, uh, but as I say, I, I, I'm not one to uh, to be able to give you uh, any report on that because I didn't mix. Uh, I mixed in training. I mixed in uh, arranged affairs. Mm. Uh, but um, I, I didn't have any particular friends. I walked down from where we lived uh, in Blackheath to the ground with Jimmy Oakes, George Robinson and Harold Hobbis later on, the three or four, and, and then there was, uh, I think, Bert Turner came to live up there somewhere. Mm -hmm. But um, it, was, uh, it was general talk. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, really, I, I never, whether I was too thick or too stupid, I, was, I wasn't concerned. Mm. My two lives was football and my home. Yeah. And, um, uh, and that was it. So he was supposed to have got me a job after the war, the Glickstein's timber thing. Uh, and... Uh, I got the job and I got a few shillings a week for being a representative for the timber firm and going round to customers. But nobody sort of uh, said, well, this sort of wood is best, or, or show me. I was flung in at the deep end <laughs> and sort of used to go to see people who were knowing nothing at all about the wares I was selling, but going on my sort of... Uh, football reputation that they would give us orders, yeah, which yeah. was absolutely stupid in the extreme. I mean, with, with the they could have given me a cause. Yeah. Well, mentioning the Glicksteins, what about Al Albert and Stanley were the two who... Well, again, we didn't have much to do with them. Uh, they were um, uh, good uh, hail fellow, well met when they come in the dressing room. Mm. Um, other than that, uh, I, I just don't know whether they were good, bad or indifferent. Uh, mm. I have a letter from Michael sending me two cup final tickets uh, when it was uh, uh, cup final day. Um, that was the day. Um, it was a celebration of the uh, centenary of the FA Cup. Oh, yeah. And the FA invited all the winning captains from year dot uh, to come. And so I said, well, I've been to the FA and they won't give me any more tickets. And my daughter and her husband want to come and he sent me two FA tickets. Mm -hmm. So it couldn't have been two. That's the son, son uh, yeah, yeah. of uh, Albert and so He's taken, it's taken a lot of stick, hasn't he, over the years, Michael Glickstein for... <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a bit of a playboy, isn't he, I believe? Well, I don't know. But, uh, I know. I know he won a libel case recently, anyway. Did he? <laughs> against I think, London Weekend Television, who basically blamed him for Charlton having to leave the valley. <laughs> 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 but then, I, I was so pleased when I saw that uh, <laughs> their plans for development of the ground was turned down by the Greenwich Council. <laughs> and if they'd have had any gumption, they'd have realised that, <laughs> wouldn't they? That, uh, they weren't going to lose their football team, Greenwich Council, <laughs> to, to Jews or the business, knowing right. how right or wrong the, uh, the Jews' image is not very favourable. <laughs> <laughs> Back, back to the 30s again, you've mentioned Jimmy Oakes, yeah. um, what are your impressions of him as a player? Because I think in one of your letters you mentioned he was never capped and you had some thoughts as to why he would never been capped. Well, I think he was the best left full back in England, much better than Hapgood. Mm -hmm. I played with Hapgood in international matches and international trial matches and he didn't have the sort of skill or anticipation uh, or the tackling ability that Jimmy Oakes had. Jimmy Oakes was the only bloke who could calm, mm. calm is the word, Stan Matthews. Mm. Uh, and to me, he was the essence uh, of everything that's good in, in defensive work. Mm -hmm. 
he had everything. He had tackling ability, he had vision, he had anticipation, he could use the ball mm. skillfully, uh, push it about. And he could direct operation besides doing his own <laughs> job. Come back! <laughs> but, um, I mean, one of the, sort of the, the amazing things about Charlton Surge's success in the 30s is that the essence of the team in the first division immediately prior to the, the war were the same as the, the, the team we've been playing in the third division just a few years before. Yes, it, it really was, yes, it was. Uh, but, but I, I think the, the um, one of the reasons for our success was that Jimmy C couldn't afford to get any players <laughs> uh, and um, we got a wonderful team understanding. Mm -hmm. We knew that uh, uh, Les Boulter always turned to his left. Uh, Hobbes would play about with the ball before he gave it you for a little while. You would never go to Harold Hobbes for a first time pass. Mm. If you push the ball to him, he would play with it for an indefinite period, <laughs> and then he would think about giving you yeah. the pass. Yeah. Something similar to Stan Matthews. Mm -hmm. uh, so you didn't go for a term pass, but Les Boulder could lay one off, George Robinson could lay one off, mm. um, so you would go for it. Uh, but um, to, to come back to, um, to, to Jimmy Oakes, uh, his understanding of the when I was manager of Liverpool I appealed to him to come and mm. join me as my coach or first team trainer not so bloody likely he <laughs> <laughs> knew more than I did <laughs> but he was very he was very um, uh, earthy and, uh, I, I can remember we played Everton I think I've told you this over the phone we played Everton in all their glory, yeah. Dixie Dean, Geldard, Cliff Britton, Joe Murphy and the lot. And um, John Oakes went into a head clash with uh, Dixie Dean, cut his forehead right across there, it was just wide open. And of course I had to go off and get hospital mm. stitches and whatnot. And so when it was revealed how really bad, I said to Jimmy, right, I would play inside left, I go tend to have Fuck off! <laughs> 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 he said, we won't have a centre half, we'll play the offside game. Yeah. Well, be, be, be able to think of that mm. just like that. Yeah. God, I, I, I think it's a miracle. Mm. And we did, we played, and if they put their nose in our half of the field, it was offside. <laughs> he, he sent everybody up and he played the rear man, yeah. the sort of Willie, what was the it? The sweeper, they called him today. Bill McCracken. Yeah. And uh, we beat them, I think, 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> <Ten men. laughs> Fantastic. I mean, are there, what, what are the games that stand out in your mind? Um, oh, the, the, there's only one game, and that was beating Newcastle in the semi-final at Leeds. Mm -hmm. Newcastle was the team, you know, like Wolverhampton, yeah. when they lost to Portsmouth in the final. They couldn't, you know, it was just a case of going there. Mm -hmm. And Newcastle, it was just a case of going to Leeds, and we beat them 4-0. <laughs> There's an interesting story about that game, isn't there? It was, uh, was there food poisoning? Oh, yes, I'd forgotten that, yes. We were supposed to have food poisoning. Some of the lads were sick. I think it was a sort of tension more than food poisoning. But it didn't show on the, <laughs> on the dome. I didn't have it. I got a stomach like a horse, so yeah. uh, it didn't affect me. But there were three or four, I forget who, who they were now, but there were three or four really sick. And um, uh, they threw it off and uh, it may have done them good because the essence of uh, a professional footballer's Saturday routine is to get rid of the waste matter. <laughs> 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 then you, you're ready to go. Ready to run, then. <laughs> <laughs> but Jimmy Trotter was like that. He used to come. That was one of Jimmy Trotter coming round when we were away with a. I think it was so stupid looking back a tin of Epsom salt. <laughs> Andrew Lippers. <laughs> they didn't give you to me a shock anyway. <laughs> so we talked since you mentioned the Newcastle game. That was the cup run, and when you won the cup. That's right. 1947. Yeah. We went on. The um, what's that, that feeling of elation that you had after the semi-final when you beat Newcastle, was that...? Oh, it, it was, uh, it was, you know, we were all on a high. Yeah. We were on a high, and 
we went back uh, we went back to the hotel and um, uh, I, I'm just trying to recollect uh, with, with Albert Brown uh, who doesn't like being called Sailor Brown <laughs> with his rolling gait Albert Brown or somebody uh, who drunk too wise I don't know I can't remember it, but it, I don't like you very much, John, but I love you now. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the wine was flowing freely. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the cup final was what a couple of weeks later. Well, that, that was uh, that was uh, in retrospect. Uh, it was uh, just a matter of course we were going to win, and mm -hmm. we had this marvelous confidence in each other. Yeah, and. Um, it wasn't the same euphoria that we had uh, uh, at the semi-final. Mm -hmm. you know. It was a good day, was, uh, but nobody got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> there were too many important people. <laughs> the players were there and the important people were there. <laughs> so, um, what, what would have been for away matches, so long distance away matches up to Newcastle or Liverpool or wherever, um, how would you have travelled? Oh, third class. Mm -hmm. uh, third class and... Um, <laughs> I can remember we wanted extra pudding. Jimmy C said no. <laughs> <laughs> and the staff gave them the <laughs> rest. Uh, and we stayed at a good hotel and mm. uh, sort of had breakfast and team talk and a light lunch and yeah. played the match, then back <laughs> back at <laughs> midnight. Never stayed overnight after a match, mm. all was back. Um, Would you stop off anywhere on the way back? Uh, very rarely, very rarely. Mm. Unless it was for a meal. We never stopped for a drink, never. No. So was it with, with Jimmy C, was, was there sort of a a continual battle amongst some of the players to try and put one over on him. He was always saying no to... Uh, there, there, there could have been, but uh, as I say, I was too thick to notice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was sort of... Um, uh, how can I... I wasn't an introvert, but I was quite happy with my own short yeah. doings and didn't yeah. bother about any other money. Mm -hmm. I'm big-headed. <laughs> <laughs> no. how, uh, how about the valley? Oh like well, the valley was marvellous. The the, the the crowd behind us at the valley was it was it was worth an extra go. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've forgotten to mention at Leeds, uh, I went over to Jimmy Trotter near the end of the game. How long, Jimmy? And he said ten minutes. So the crowd behind us picked it up. Only ten <laughs> minutes more. Only ten. <laughs> and that went on for the whole of the ten minutes. <laughs> Not that it mattered with a four goal lead. <laughs> that was a marvellous feeling to hear the crowd ring, you know, singing that. Mm. But when he had those absolutely packed crowds at the valley where people maybe were spilling over onto the touch. Uh, yes, or... well, it, it was the atmosphere that sort of lifted you, there's no mm. doubt about it. Whether we would have done the same with a smaller crowd, I don't know, but uh, I doubt it. I, I think the crowd uh, of those days uh, had as much bearing on our success mm. as, uh, as the players because it's a, it's a wonderful feeling to an individual mm. to have the crowd behind you, mm. really. Uh, uh, you can't describe it. And well, when you've got 60 or 70,000 people roaring that, in the Yeah, room. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was what we had at um, a replay, didn't it? Wasn't it 70? I thought it was 84,000, but somebody well, there's completely 70, the official gate is 75,000. 75,000. But, but the crowd were always saying that the Glickstons were fiddling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of people who say there were 90,000. Whether they could do it or not, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> if they could, I think they would do. Mm. Because uh, that was a, a mammoth, so two replays, wasn't it, against Aston Villa? Oh, yes, uh, fantastic. Unfortunately, the wrong result in the end. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, of course, they broke Harold Hobbes's leg yeah. uh, at Highbury. Uh, and uh, what was the full back's name who did it? And, uh, he, he went into a tackle with me, it was sort of five or six minutes later. Mm. Do you want your bloody leg breaking, too? I mean, how a fellow professional can mm. do it. One of, one of the things the supporters mentioned when they talk about you and your style of play was that you were 
never once been messed with on the field. And that's I would never... Never once been messed with on the field. I mean, you're always... Well, to be messed with. You're always, messed about. You're always hard, and, and <laughs> sometimes you weren't that subtle. I, I, I never realised that. I never realised I had this uh, reputation, but... I played the ball. I don't yeah. think I ever did. Well, I'm positive. I, I never did a dirty tackle in all my life of going over the top mm. or going in late. Yeah. Uh, I played the ball and I played it hard. And oh my God, I, I went through my injuries. I've had a hematoma here. I've had a, a crack coccyx which left me uh, paralysed with my two legs being stuck needles in. Can you feel that, Don? And I couldn't need it. Uh, I had concussion and played unconscious for half the game, came in at full time and came, is it half time or not? <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, whether I was hard or not, I got bumped about as well. Because in those days the, the balls that you used, the very heavy leather balls, especially on a wet day, and they don't bear any comparison to the balls they use today. For example, with, with a line. Well, well, I, I, I think I, I had this strength in my legs. I could float a ball even though it was heavy and mm. leathered lead. <laughs> um, but uh, I just took it as a matter of course that I could do these things. Mm. Now, how about how about your international career? Well, of course, I, I, I'm furious about that because I should have had so many more caps than I did. Mm -hmm. But the, the selectors in those days just didn't know anything at all about football. You've heard about the lovely story of the Liverpool director who coming away... Well, never mind, lads, you, you just lost 2-0 and uh, it was a good game. <laughs> Liverpool had won 2-0 but they were playing in white. And he didn't know it <laughs> because they had to change because the home team were in red. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> so, uh, and the and the FA directors were like that. They had no idea of football. They were sort of small men in a big job. So Donald, who played for Charlton at left half, inside left, centre forward, centre half, centre forward, all would pick him as reserve. <laughs> Uh, and I was a record number. I was reserved for England for, I think, two seasons. Mm. When when did you make your debut for England? Um, against Germany. Germany. Mm. We beat Germany 6-3. I was left half. Uh, that was... Was that this game? That, that's the one with the, the arms. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Cause that's that today, I mean, even today, that's that game is still talked about. The fact that the English team gave the Nazi salute. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. Um, well, wh what happened? Uh, the British ambassador, a bloke called Neville Henderson, came into the dressing room and said, I know it's asking a lot of you gentlemen, but it would be a wonderful uh, gesture. Uh, it's just like a shaking hands mm. uh, if you did the salute, you see. And uh, of course we didn't know the full implication of the Jewish uh, extermination and things yeah. like that. Nobody did. And, uh, so we agreed to do it, so silly old buggy. <laughs> there, was, there, was no, um, there was no enthusiasm for it, but with well, an ambassador coming into the dressing room asking that... Uh, yeah. I mean, did anyone in the team uh, refuse to, to begin with? I, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think... Uh, I, I think there was some murmurs, yes, I think there was mm. some murmurs, I remember. But uh, nothing strong. Mm. Uh, it was a game of football to us, and... Uh, if they wanted us to give the buddy another salute, well, mm. it's on their heads. We were, mm. we were practically ordered to do it. Yeah, was this was this game in Berlin or in Munich? Oh, or Berlin. Berlin. Oh, yes, yes, the Olympic Stadium, Berlin. Mm -hmm. Did uh, Hitler actually come out and meet the teams? Uh, oh, God, no. But I, 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 we, did, we didn't see him, but uh, he was at the match mm. and left when they were losing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, Henderson came in afterwards and said, gentlemen, he said, uh, You've done England proud today, and looking back, uh, what he was saying, oh, no, he said, you'll never know what you've done for England, and looking back on it, of course, Hitler was so stupid and mad that if he could beat us at football, mm. he would have gone to war in 1938 instead of 1939. It, yeah. it postponed the little and gave us a chance to build up. Mm -hmm. So who was in the, the team with you on that day? I've got the to list on here. Have I got most of them in? Yes, there's only one that I can't remember, and that's um, the one at Woodley. 
the other side of Woodley. Oh no, that's Hapgood. Hapgood. Uh, oh, it's Broom. Have I got Broom anywhere? I guess I've got Broom. There's only one I don't know. That's uh, it's Cliff Bastin, Robinson, Willingham. Uh, uh, anyway, they're all at the back. <laughs> Is that one? I, I don't know of that one there. That's Broom. I can't remember the one the other side of Woodley. Mm -hmm. That's a it's very strange photograph. It's very strange to see that even now at a salute, <laughs> yeah. doing, a, yeah. doing a Nazi salute. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, what about because Sam Bartram never earned a full cap, did he? Oh well, he, he was a marvellous long ball. He had one ball longer than the other in the bath, and you like to show it. <laughs> <laughs> long, long ball, Sam. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he was a character and uh, fearless. Mm. That, that was his main attribute, he was fearless. And tremendous um, agility to get over to these shots. I, I, I remember an older shot once, I was behind a bloke who was having a shot at goal. I forget who it was, but he hit it so hard. And, and, and I was behind it, he was going in the top corner of the net, right between the upright. I thought, well, that's the drawn so good. And Sam died and got a fingertip to it and put it over. How he did it, I'll never know to this day. Mm. It was perfection. Mm. Perfection. And of course, he kept his place in the team for 20 years. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> after I was <laughs> there forever after I left. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he was, you know, as much Charlton as the, as the Valley was. Right. Yes, yeah. it, it was Sam Bartram. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, going, moving on again, um, you got the cap in 1938. Mm -hmm. When did you next get? Were you then a regular? In well, that, that, that was um, that, that was uh, a touring cap. Um, uh, you got. Uh, I played against Germany. We lost against Switzerland. Uh, and we played France and won. Uh, but you only got the one cap for the, the three days. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, uh, I don't think I played again. That was '38, uh, before the international came. Uh, oh, oh, I think there was. I was reserved for the uh, against all Europe. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that was, but you can sort it yeah. out. At, uh, yeah. And um, and then our next team was, was uh, during the war. Those. And after the war, uh, I don't think I played at all. No. The, 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 oh, I, I went on a tour of Romania in 1939. Mm -hmm. uh, we toured um, Yugoslavia, yeah. Romania, and Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't play against Yugoslav. But I played against Romania, and, and Romania, sort of uh, July 1939, <laughs> was a hell of a long way from safety. Because <laughs> the troops were on the move whilst we were in Romania. I'm sure. surprised they allowed you to, to yes, play there. Yes, it was fantastic. I mean, were there sort of because there were soldiers with fixed bayonets all around the ground. <laughs> I can remember that. Um, did you make a, did, did the team, whole team, make a quick exit from the country as soon as the game was over? Or uh, I think there was. A <laughs> That's good. Idea. I, I, I think there was a, an attitude of haste <laughs> <laughs> coming on the train because we came by train, mm. bum bum bum, with soldiers all over the place, mm. and uh, then we played in France. And um, did I play in France? The match that I remember again in France was just before the war in 1938, I think it was, France had an international match against Italy. Mm -hmm. And when Italy sort of came on the side of the Germans, sanctions were applied. Mm -hmm. And France called the match off, or Italy called the match off. So France had to sort of, and we played a match on Saturday. We caught a sleeper train to, 
to go over and to Paris. Mm -hmm. And we played France on the Sunday and beat them. <laughs> <laughs> I think five two or something. I forget <laughs> what was the score was, but we beat the, the international French side mm -hmm. by a club side. This is Charlton. Charlton. Yeah. <laughs> That's marvelous. What about the the tour of? Uh, the States and Canada. Oh, th those were th those were fun days uh, mm. because uh, the standard wasn't very good, and uh, we won. I, I think we won all of them. I, I think it's somewhere in there. Mm. We won all of them. Drew one. Yeah. And um, that would have been the, was that the first time that a, the British club side had gone across. I, I think it was uh, undefeated. Yes. Mm. Yes, I think it was. And how, how did the Americans sort of view? Football, oh, the, 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 they were fine, and they were very hospitable, mm -hmm. and um, we really had a wonderful tour. Yeah. Uh, but fancy, we, I, I think we played about 14 matches in about three weeks, mm. and travelled from New York to Vancouver, <laughs> <laughs> back again, through the Rockies, and uh, marvellous, and, and slept in sleepers on the train. Yeah, and that was just, just the, the team and the... Just the team and the there officials. Was, there were no, no wives or anything? There, was no there were no wives allowed with the party. Oh, God, no. no. Right. Ooh, no. <laughs> Jimmy said he was dead against women folk. I think he had an unhappy marriage. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think I wasn't involved. Mm. There's a long, t it's a long tour, though, isn't it? God, it was, yes. Uh, and hard work. Mm. Uh, 13 matches. And, uh, I, I think the book, uh, you found the book in there of, uh, of our tour. Mm -hmm. Italy v England, a oh, tour of Canada and USA, with all the players who went and have not put the results in. <laughs> <laughs> but it was Quebec, <laughs> Montreal, New York, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Chicago, St. Paul, Calgary, Vancouver, Victoria, Victoria, Vancouver, Vancouver, Saskatoon, Saskatoon, Winnipeg, Toronto, Toronto, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, New York, New York, Montreal, Montreal, Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> this was just presented to the uh, players. Players, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think somewhere in there there is a sort of um, fixture list with me to put the results in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Who was Williams, L.S. Williams? Not he was a winger who we transferred from older shots. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, as I say, he came to us sort of 1938-39, played a, a few matches in the first team. Yeah. But, uh, it wasn't a success. Uh, it, it was fairish, but uh, mm. it didn't set any bridges. No, <laughs> no so it's just not a, I mean, all the other names I recognise, but uh, his um, name I don't. I, I would never have thought of him. Uh, it, it's really mentioned in there, isn't it? It's just his last. It's the last name on the list inside, inside the front cover. Mm. Mm, Williams. He uh, was a winger mm. from Aldershot. And of course. The war took a huge chunk out of your... Yes, that, 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 that's yeah. the annoying place. The, the, the war came and uh, uh, because I was a PT instructor in private life uh, with, as an FA coach, mm -hmm. uh, the army expanded to such an extent that they didn't have enough sort of instructors of any description. Mm. So the PT side uh, I, I got in touch with the FA mm -hmm. to see if they could. Uh, so all the FA coaches uh, were invited to join the army and after a short army course at Aldershot we were made sergeant PT instructors. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, were, I volunteered, I got a letter somewhere, I volunteered for uh, the BEM, the British Exped Expeditionary Force, mm -hmm. and um, I got a letter saying that I've received your request and I've passed it on to the right quarters and you'll be hearing from them. Mm. But I never got into the BEF, but I got into troop ships. Yeah. And what happened uh, at Singapore, uh, two or three large troop ships arrived in Singapore, discharged the troops, and the troops could hardly walk. 
because it had taken them four or five weeks on board ship mm. doing nothing, no exercises at all, and yeah. lost, lost use of the leg. So uh, every big troop ship had a PT instructor mm -hmm. and organised a daily Routines. PT a yeah. routine. So you, you were in the Navy? But previously I was in the Navy, so I was home from home. Mm. Uh, I joined the Navy when I was 15, mm. as a boy, and um, bought myself out when I was 21 to play for Torquay United. Mm -hmm. And so how old were you when you joined Charlton? Uh, 21, 22, 23, I 23. think. Yeah. And wh whereabouts in the league were Torquay at the, at the time? Safely in the middle, I think. Mm. Safely in the middle, because we, we did well. We, uh, a bloke called Dickie Bird was a good winger. He was transferred to Arsenal. Uh, Georgie Stab was a centre forward. He was transferred to some... Because that's all they did. Mm. They found that their crowd wouldn't support them. Yeah. Uh, the receipts, so they had to buy uh, fine players and then sell them. Mm. So I was a godsend to them. But then again, it just shows you, uh, as an amateur playing for a team, I had all sorts of people. Don't sign for Torquay as a professional. We'll we'll look after you. We'll give you two hundred pound. We'll give you three hundred pound. We'll do because. Uh, to say uh, uh, to save a transfer mm. fee, if I didn't sign for Torquay as a professional, I was a free transfer to anybody. Mm. Tottenham, Aston Villa, <laughs> you name it, all the people were after me. Mm. And so I said to the manager, I said, well, I'm getting all these offers. Why should I sign for you? What, what, what? He said, well, he said, I can't give you anything, Tom. He said, uh, uh, you just get your signing home fee of ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but if you transfer, then we could make it. So he said, I'll have a word with the chair. A bloke called, uh, I can see him now. Uh, mm. A little sort of pokey fella. And they said, oh yes, we look after you, Dom. Mm. And of course, when it came to me being transferred for Charlton for three and a half thousand quid, I said, well, you know, oh no, oh no, you're trying to get illegal payment, no, no, no. So, uh, I, 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 as an accrued share of benefit, all I could have was a very small percentage of 650 quid. <laughs> but it just shows you, uh, you, you the, the directors, um, uh, how can I put it? Meeny, meeny, miny, mo, small people. Mm. Yeah. So if there were sort of the other Tottenham's and whoever sort of else chasing after you or looking at you, how did you come to join a third division team in Charlton? Uh, ah, well, ah, no, they were only watching me mm -hmm. after I'd played for Torquay. Right. They weren't watching me whilst, Frank Brown was watching me whilst I was playing for Navy teams mm -hmm. at Devonport and Pla I played for Devon and I played for the Navy in representative games. Mm. Uh, and only Frank Brown sort of uh, cottoned on to me that uh, I was something uh, worth following, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> we prove that. <laughs> yeah. So I, I signed amateur for Draw Key. Uh, and again, it shows my sort of, uh, I, I can't describe it, my sort of. Um, lacking of, uh, of outside uh, happenings. Uh, it, it came to me, and I played for Plymouth, uh, I played for Devon against somebody at Home Park, and he came in the dressing room, and Bob, uh, the manager of Plymouth, said, get out of here, get out of here! <laughs> so I said, don't have anything to do with him, I'm interested in you, mm. and went out, so I got dressed and nobody approached me, so I walked out uh, and then Frank Brown was waiting for me at the bus stop. <laughs> he said, how would you like to pay for my reserves? I said, I'm not bothered. Said, I'll give you ten pounds. I said, oh yes please. <laughs> 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 so that was my first illegal payment. <laughs> ten pounds for playing for his reserve <laughs> against Bath. I played once for his reserves against Bath and we beat them 5-0. And uh, the next week I was in the first team against Luton Town <laughs> and we beat them and I'll remember there was a lot of talk about Tate, a bloke called Tate, T-A-I-T, 
had been transferred from Manchester City, my hometown, so I knew all about him, uh, to Luton, all for a tremendous fee. <laughs> I'll never forget it, Torquay, the grounds there, and here are railings, mm -hmm. like, uh, and it was a slippery pitch, there was green rain, and he went for a ball on the wing, and I went down and tattled him, and he slid, and I slid with him, under the railings into the crowd. <laughs> I never saw Tate after that again. <laughs> he played a defensive. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fair tackle. <laughs> sure, sure that my enemies would say it was dirty, but it was <laughs> Right, back in to the war. Yes, That's well, right. the, the war came, and of course, uh, I, I was um, uh, seconded to the Canadian Army, first mm -hmm. div, as a PT instructor. They didn't have one of their own and taught them uh, PT as well as football. Mm. I got a letter from a general saying, thank you very much when I left them. You've done a marvellous job for us and what have you. And uh, then I was posted to troop ships. <laughs> that was an amazing thing. <laughs> uh, my wife was living with her parents at Newton Lee Willows, just outside Liverpool. Mm. And I was posted to Dominion Monarch, which was desailing from Liverpool. So I reported to the Dominion Monarch on Thursday and uh, we weren't leaving till Friday evening. Mm. And so I stowed all my gear in, slipped away, nipped over to Newton Lee Willows, had a meal with my wife and her family and stayed there the night and went back the following morning to where I'd left the ship. No ship! <laughs> <laughs> I said, where's the Dominion? Oh, she's anchored in midstream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that shot. <laughs> An empty key. <laughs> I had vision of me being shot at dawn. <laughs> and uh, anyway, there was a tug going aboard with uh, supplies, and I jumped on board there and crept aboard. <laughs> Nobody had missed me. <laughs> Such an important person. Nobody had missed me. <laughs> So that was a shock. So we went on the Dominion Monarch and uh, the thing was, of course, we took troops out to the Far East and uh, loaded up with food and, and all the, the troop decks were refrigerated, loaded up with sides of beef and pork and whatnot, butter, everything you can imagine, and uh, went over to... Uh, uh, that was in New Zealand, Australia, we bought pig iron and mm -hmm. stuff, and, and then back again, troop ships. Out to the so did you spend a long time actually posted abroad or was it away? Uh, from yeah, well, I, I was uh, 18 months uh, on troop ships. Uh, mm -hmm. I did two trips on the Dominion Monarch and uh, one trip on the Highland Chieftain. Yeah. Did you get any football in that time? Uh, yes, I did. I played football in, uh, in Australia. <laughs> Uh, at the Sydney Cricket Ground, mm -hmm. that's the football pitch. And uh, I played football in South Africa, in Durban. Um, but that's all. I, I was in India for Bombay for a long time, three or four weeks, yeah. but didn't get any football. Mm -hmm. so because when war was declared, the league was suspended. Yeah, completely. Wages stopped, everything. Just so stopped. The and then it started again. Mm. Uh, it picked up uh, when it was realised that we weren't going to be, do be bombed immediately. It started up again and you could guess for players. I guessed it for Liverpool when I was stationed at, uh, at Winnick mm. Mental Hospital uh, because I was a, a remedial PT instructor and Winnick Mental Hospital was divided into half the mental inmates in one half and the wounded soldiers from Dunkirk in the other half. Mm. And uh, I'll never forget, uh, I had a big Airedale dog because I was living at Newton Lee Willows with yeah. my wife and family. And uh, I used to take my Airedale with me around the wards and it was a, a wonderful, wonderful therapy. Mm. Oh, you know, everybody wanted That's to tap the dog, the dog. Yeah. something familiar. Mm. You know, after being blown up on bloody beaches and being brought back, and yeah. one bloke was um, so badly injured that he was in uh, 
uh, plaster of Paris from his neck down to his doing. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to give you PT. <laughs> Blink your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> because they didn't want to be felt sorry for and I, and I had that sort of happy knack of being their level and treating them as though they were ordinary yeah. people yeah. so I did that for quite a long time oh I played cricket there for the inmates <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, they had a, quite a good cricket team mm. uh, the inmates, you play for us, Don, won't you? Because <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> and I played football there, you know, but very sort of well. But I got to some very good cricketers. Dennis Compton came and played for us. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, it was a, it was a good uh, doing that uh, winning hospital. So did you actually spend um, much, much time in Britain playing Wall-to-wall-time football? Uh, or, or uh, well, reasonably. I, I should imagine I had one and a half years when I wasn't available to play football out of the four or five years. Mm. That was when I was on the and, uh, and how was Jimmy Seed about getting players together for, for the match? Well, I, I, I wasn't bothered because I didn't like the bloke anyway. <laughs> and if I could play for Liverpool or... Uh, uh, who else did I play for? Chester, I played mm -hmm. in Chester. Uh, I wasn't bothered about going, travelling down to... Uh, and I couldn't get the leave anyway to travel yeah. down to London. Mm. But um, I was able to get leave to play in the cup ties and <laughs> <laughs> pick the matches. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you're, you're at Wembley in 43 and 44. Uh, well, I was in, we, we were at Wembley f for four years. Mm. 43, 44, 46, 47. Mm. Well, I don't know what happened, 45. <laughs> 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 I must have been abroad. <laughs> but of course, the 43 one, you were hammered, weren't you? By, uh, yes, but uh, that, that was really annoying because uh, uh, that was, who uh, was it? Do you hammer it? Arsenal. Wasn't it? Arsenal, there you go. Albert Brown says that. Um, Jimmy C lost us that match because he told us uh, to mark um, to, to mark that in. Oh no, that was Derby County. Mm. Uh, Jimmy C said, "Never mind the attack. You mark Carter and Doherty to mm. Sailor Brown and I." I'd forgotten it. <laughs> Albert Brown told me and reminded me of that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, but against the Arsenal, uh, it was one-one. And um, oh no, I'm mixing the match. That was Derby County. It was one-one at full time. That's right. Yeah. And we lost in extra time because in the first minute of extra time, um, Stamps, mm -hmm. big burly centre forward, went for the ball on the left wing, and Bert Turner went out with him, mm. and Stamps. Push Bert Turner with both hands over the touchline, went on and we stopped. It must be a foul, you know. The referee didn't give it, but we stopped. So he went down to the touchline, to the goal line, pulled it back, and Rach Carter and Doherty were both waiting to, to put it. Yeah. So that happening uh, mm. uh, in the first minute of extra time That's when you were tired anyway, of the injustice of it. Uh, we, we threw up the towel because I'm afraid I wasn't as good a captain as Jimmy Oakes. <laughs> I was furious. <laughs> what about, I mean, did the, did winning, because you won 44, won the World Cup in 44, didn't you? Uh, yes, we beat Chelsea. Oh, we beat Chelsea, yes. Um, did, did the players attach as much importance to winning that in front of must be nearly 100,000 people at Wembley as, say, to the FA Cup? Uh, I don't think so. I think the war was always looming in the yeah. background, and uh, you thought of people who, um, uh, who were sort of losing their lives, the boat wanders. They would not look at it, all joined the territorial unit uh, before the war. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined the uh, I joined the police. <laughs> I was a policeman, mm -hmm. uh, and um, they were out there, the whole boat and team from the word go, mm. and 
that died, you know, players that died and got killed. Goslin, a lovely player, mm. lovely black, he, he was killed, there were three or four of the Bolton. So I think in the back of everybody's mind, uh, there wasn't the same uh, enjoyment of football as there, were, as there yeah. would have been. You were playing, but uh, you were playing for money rather than sort of, uh, mm. even though it was only 30 bob. <laughs> <laughs> were there sort of more backhanders going on? Uh, yes, uh, I was, I mean, Stamp Matthew made a fortune up in Scotland. <laughs> and um, uh, and for, he got me, he said, well, he was playing for Morton. Oh, Morton, want to send the forward done. Uh, oh, yes, I can get the leave, I can be up there, you see. And then I, I, I was selected for a Saturday, and uh, on the Thursday before the Saturday, I was going to play for Morton. Uh, an edict came out that anybody stationed in England couldn't play football in Scotland. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I missed out on that. Mm. I, I think the only sort of uh, backhanders I got was playing for Liverpool. George Kay was the manager. And um, we played Southport. Mm. And they had guest players as well. It's quite, it wasn't like Liverpool and Southport of pre war time. Mm. And we beat them, I think, eight or nine or ten, one, and I scored four or five goals. And I went in for me expensive with George Kay. Oh, he said, here you are, Donny, you did very well. <laughs> he gave me about £25 in five and four. <laughs> that was the only time I got an <laughs> Bless you, George Kay. <laughs> what did you get paid for international appearances? Was it the same? The same I think thing? it was six pounds. Six yeah. pounds, it's slightly more. And no, but no, I don't think there was a winning bonus. I don't remember a winning. There must have been, but I don't remember getting it. Uh, bloody nay, the FA was uh, as tight as uh, Jimmy <laughs> Seed was. Stanley Rouse. <laughs> mm. uh, after, after the war, because Charlton, first two seasons after the war, were at Wembley twice. Twice, yeah. Um, I, first don't know, season I don't know what we did in the league. <laughs> Well, I was going to say that the first season, 46, there was no league, it was still the same. Oh, oh yes, it was. System, uh, but in 47, this first year of the league, and Charlton league. was struggling. Um, I just wonder whether you have any, any thoughts as to why those immediate sort of post-war years, although Charlton have still been successful in the cup competitions, mm -hmm. they hadn't managed to... Where were we in the league in 47? I think you were right down, sort of 18th or... 19th position. With me playing? With <laughs> <laughs> you playing? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> but I, I don't think the team were doing as well in the league as they, as they, they, as they had done be before. I'm hazy around there. Uh, that is a long time ago. You know, that's a problem in memory. Uh, I was just trying to think. Because, I, mean, I, I, I often think that with the success that Charlton had immediately before the war mm -hmm. and the th it was your first three season Division One. You were never out of the top four. Is that mm -hmm. right? You were sort of second, fourth, and third, or something. Mm -hmm. um, if the war hadn't have come along, it's all hypothetical. Uh, yes. But well, what we, would have happened? We would have, could have been the team of the, you know, the Liverpool, the, the Arsenal, the thirties, or the Liverpool of the eighties. I, mean, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I just can't remember. Forty seven. War broke out. What in forty six? Didn't they? War finished in forty five. Forty five. Forty six. Forty six was still the war. League. 46 47 was the first season back at, as the Football League as it should be. Well, I, I think I went to Brighton as manager in 47. Mm -hmm. uh, that was probably your, your, last, your last season with Charlton. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> 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 well, you'll be in there anyway when I join Brighton. Mm. Um, uh, how long were you with Brighton? Uh, oh, that was, uh, I think, three or four seasons. Mm -hmm. I did very, very well with Brighton. We, we never won anything, but we, we were happy. And I think I'm the only manager that, uh, in our home match, I used to get on the tannoy and tell the supporters what we were hoping to do, how we were going to do it, <laughs> and the dangers from the opposition. Mm. <laughs> 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 it went very well, it was very popular. I'm sure I've had, be, yeah. hun I've not had hundreds, I've had tens of letters recalling my talks over the Tannoy <laughs> and how people used to get there early so that they wouldn't miss it mm. and enjoy it. Uh, so uh, I, I, I was in complete charge of the playing side, mm. 
we didn't have much money for transfer fees, but I only had four directors. Waitling, Campbell, uh, Waitling, Campbell, you can see him too, so Witcher, Witcher, and some, so, just four. so it was a marvellous job. And then Liverpool came after me. Oh, uh, and so I was, I, I think I was on 2,000 a year with Brighton. They were offering me three and a half thousand at Liverpool. May have had something to do yeah. with it, uh, but I was a fool to go. Oh, how foolish! They had nine directors. Not one of them knew anything at all about football, and they vetted my. I I I, I knew that they sort of uh, vetted the manager's team. But I thought yeah. I'd be able to persuade them, you know. To but could I? So they, so they had a the heavy-handed selection. Oh, yes. And the players used to mix with the directors, and the directors used to mix with the players. <laughs> so I only lasted three years. Uh, my claim to fame, I took them into the second division. <laughs> <laughs> I had an old team. Mm. I, 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 don't know. I don't think I put it in there. Where did I put it? I'll just show you something. Right. Which, uh, I had to contend with. Uh, old Phil Taylor getting old, and uh, oh dear. Mm. Mm, it doesn't show it on that one. What you can see, middle aged spread of Billy Little, <laughs> Bill Jones, Laurie Hughes, uh, <laughs> Bob Paisley, bless him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all old. Mm. And, the sort of attitude there was Billy Little, great player. No, I wouldn't take anything from him, either at outside left or centre forward. But he had no ball control. He was strong, he was fast, he was brave. Mm -hmm. But when he got to my age, when I took over, he wasn't so fast, he wasn't so brave, <laughs> and he was slow. <laughs> so Stan Seymour and I had a report. And and uh, he said, I, I'm looking for a, a big name centre forward, Don. Can you help me? I said, I've got one. Bill Little, he's the best centre forward in the business. So, um, <laughs> he was, he was a good centre forward. But well, he didn't like playing centre forward. There was a lot of trouble, you know, bang, bang, <laughs> that he wanted. <laughs> so we agreed, I think, twelve and a half thousand pounds for Billy Little at 32 years of age. <laughs> so I went to the board meeting. Gentlemen, I've got good news. I've had an offer for Billy Little of twelve and a half thousand. And a little bloody coal merchant, Martin, just said, What? So Billy Little will sack the bloody manager first? <laughs> and that was the attitude. Yeah. So, Martin Dale had a lot of shares, so he had the influence. <laughs> and, uh, and that was the sort of atmosphere I had to contend with. Uh, I put up with it for three or four seasons. and. Uh, and sod you and uh, went down to Bobby Tracy and uh, bought myself a pub uh, uh, in a lovely little village and enjoyed that. Yeah. So uh, that was the, really the end of your connection with football? Finish. And then <laughs> Bournemouth came. Mm -hmm. uh, Reg Haywood and Doug Haywood were brothers who had the controlling interest of Bournemouth. And Reg Haywood and his wife used to come down to my pub for weekends mm. and we got on very well together, my wife and them. And uh, they lost their manager, Freddie Cox, went to Portsmouth and left them in the lurch, he didn't have a manager. And the news broke whilst he was at Bobby Tracy with me. She said, Don, come and help us, you know, I said, not so likely. <laughs> anyway, he talked and talked, you know, I've got this full charge and I'm, what you say, you've got full control of the playing side. So he talked me into it. Mm. So I went back to Bournemouth and uh, sold the pub, uh, sold my sort of uh, uh, well, tenant's uh, mm -hmm. stature, and went to Bournemouth. And um, I had three good seasons with them. We didn't win anything, but we had some good results. And of course, they'd beaten Manchester United in the Cup the season before I went there, so they were expecting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't realise it was a one-off. <laughs> and uh, 
Meg Haywood, my pal, died. Mm. Of course, his brother, Doug Haywood, uh, who was in Jimmy Seed's class, uh, didn't like me, and within a month of his brother dying, I was out. <laughs> mm. So, uh, that was the end of professional football with yeah. Bournemouth. But I came back a little bit later with um, Wickham Wanderers. I coached Wickham Wanderers. That was a nice little job. And um, is your interest in football now is oh, enthusiastic? Oh, nominal, nominal, nominal. So you I do, I do me pools. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, I mean, how, how do you think about the the modern game when you, when you see it? On the well, uh, I appreciate the control that the managers have over the players. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the fitness of the players. They're about ten times fitter than we ever were. Yeah. Uh, back and forward, back and forward. But as a spectacle, uh, it's lost a lot of uh, its glamour. Mm. But as I say, I, I, I realise that, and if I was manager, I would want the player to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> because success uh, results are so important. Yeah. Uh, and it's the manager's head that's going to be chopped off, so he's going he's to do all he can. He's, one of the firing uh, he's not going to bother about the spectators and mm. uh, spectacle. He's watching results, and results is no doubt about it. Is to have players and ten players in your defensive area, and then ten players in the attacking area. But uh, it falls down in the ten players in the attacking area. <laughs> now, if they had ten Don Welsh, he'd be there. <laughs> Um, we'll be going about now, but just to finish off a couple of, couple of questions. Um, one thing that some of the other players have mentioned is you were the, probably the first Charlton player to have a car. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, uh, I had to have a car to uh, to do my little job with Glixton's as they're as doing, and that was sort of the little bit of extra that I, I had coming in from Glickton yeah. allowed me to sort of have the car. A human minx, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so again, that could have caused uh, a little animosity in the camp. I don't know, it didn't but, bother. But Howard Hobbies had cars quite soon afterwards. Yes. Because he didn't run the taxi or didn't have a couple of taxis that he used to... I think he did. I think he sort of charged for people. <laughs> I don't think I ever did that. No, no I didn't. No. If I gave him a lift, I gave him a yeah. lift. No, no, I'm not saying he charged. Pardon? I'm not saying that you charged. I'm not no, no, but I think Harold did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, and so the last question, I mean, well, how do you feel, I mean, do you, when you, if you look at the football results, do you always look to Charlton's first or do you? Oh, yes, I, I look at Charlton. Charlton first. Uh, they're, they're my first and only love. Uh, I've never loved any of the others because I've been in a, a very sort of unenviable position as manager. Mm -hmm. But Charlton, it was carefree. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I played my football that way. If we won, we won. If we lost, we lost. You know, it, yeah. was, on the, it, it was no... Um, it was no sort of... Uh, great uh, tragedy that uh, we lost. Mm -hmm. That was Jimmy Seed's uh, problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. we g I gave of my best, or we gave of our best, and uh, fortunately it was good enough to, to bring in some good results. Yeah. So Charlton uh, are my one and only true love in soccer. When, when was the last time you actually saw them play? Um, I think it was uh, no, in Oldham. Yes, mm -hmm. I went I, I, living in Manchester with my sister in those days, mm -hmm. and Oldham was only a sort of a, a bus ride away. Uh, I let them know, and I got two um, director's box tickets to, to watch them at Oldham. Mm -hmm. And um, is that very long ago? <laughs> second division, is it? Um, it would be second division. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember. How long ago it was? Uh, how, how did you uh, I would be living in Manchester, so uh, it would be ten years ago mm -hmm. at least. How, how did you feel when they left the valley? I I, I really felt broken-hearted. I really did. Uh, I meant to get down there for the last match. I was invited, but yeah. I was in hospital, so mm -hmm. 
uh, I couldn't, uh, but um, it, it has a tremendous uh, uh, impact on me that uh, they were leaving the valley. It, it, it felt as though a part of my life was going out, and yeah. vice versa, it's an uplift that they're going back. Yes. Well done, Greenwich councillors! <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know, every child supporter feels exactly the same, from the, the youngest yeah. right through to the older supporter, um, and the valley is you can't take a football club away from its roots. No, so you, can, you, can. you can try and run it as a business, but yeah. at the same time there's still that, yeah. those strings tugging at the heart, you know. Which it, it, it really does. Mm. It, yeah. It's something, it, it's your baby, it, it, it's just as more, it's just as sort of emotional uh, as mm. having a baby. That's your lot. Right, <laughs> so, thanks very much, Don. Don't mention